hi everyone i am dr anita consultant microbiologist and uh, today i am going to discuss about needle stick injury and post exposure prophylaxis so uh, coming to the chapter preview so it deals with the introduction about occupational and non occupational exposure and definition of exposed and sore person and specimens for needle stick injury risk factors and for needle stick injury and the prevention of needle stick injury and regarding post exposure management and pep for hiv and hepatitis b infection that is post exposure prophylaxis so moving on to introduction so what is occupational exposure so it is defined as a percutaneous injury example needle stick injury or any other sharp injury and the splash injury with exposure to blood and body fluids that is contact with the mucous membrane example eyes or mouth or contact with non intact skin example abraded skin or afflicted with dermatitis and contact with the intact skin when the duration is prolonged so an occupational injury is often loosely termed as needle stick injury although in addition to needles it also includes injuries caused by other sharp objects uh, what could be the sharp objects like glass vials surgical blades forceps and also it includes splashes by body and body fluids and blood so non occupational exposure refers to exposure to potential blood borne infections outside of the workplace setting like unsafe sex or sexual assault so occupational injury is uh, often loosely termed as needle stick injury so picture showing needle stick injury and uh, then moving on to the agents uh, that can cause uh, i mean that can be transmitted by needle stick injury so these are the blood borne viruses so what are the blood borne viruses so hepatitis b virus hbv and hepatitis c virus that is hcv and hiv human immunodeficiency virus causing aids and the risk of transmission following needle stick injury is highest for hepatitis b virus that is 30% followed by hcv that is 3% and hiv is only 0.3% so you can remember as 30 30% 3% and 0.3%. So HBV, hepatitis C and HIV. So it is very easy to remember. The risk of exposure following mucous membrane exposure is relatively less. That is only 0.09% for HIV. So these are the three main blood borne viruses that can be transmitted through contaminated needles and shops and all. Okay, so coming to the next slide, these are some of the most common blood borne viruses that can be transmitted. That is hepatitis B virus, HIV virus, and hepatitis C virus. The risk of transmission is highest for hepatitis B virus, followed by hepatitis C virus, and then HIV. That is 30%, 3%, and 0.3%. And what could be the routes of blood borne pathogens that can be transmitted? that is uh, contaminated blood transfusion and contaminated needles and tattooing with dirty needles or contaminated needles and cut on the skin with infected instruments so these these are the transmission routes of blood borne pathogens so moving on to the specimens for needle stick injury potentially infectious body fluids include blood genital secretions that is semen and vaginal secretions and all body fluids that is csf synovial fluid pleural fluid peritoneal fluid pericardial fluid and amniotic fluid so these are the potential infectious uh, samples uh, specimens the following are not considered potentially infectious unless visibly contaminated with blood what are those uh, potentially i mean non infectious samples are feces nasal secretion saliva sputum sweat tears urine and vomitus so other type of exposures include uh, the exposure happens in research laboratory and also due to human bites so these are the specimens for needle stick injury so this is a picture showing potentially infectious samples for uh, needle stick injury with blood samples and csf sample so moving on to the definitions of exposed to person and sourced person so who is considered exposed to person is a person who is potentially at risk of acquiring blood borne infection that may be due to exposure to blood or potentially infectious body fluids in her workplace so source person is the person who is either identified or unknown the possible source of contamination through blood or potentially infectious body fluids either unknown or 
potentially there could be a possible source of contamination. So, those are considered as a source person. The source may be a patient if a healthcare worker is exposed or the perpetrator in the case of sexual assault. Risk factors, so type of needle that is a hollow bore needle or solid needle and device visibly contaminated with blood and it depends upon the depth of injury and also volume of blood involved in the exposure and depends upon the viral load of the source person, timely performing the first child, first child and timely start of appropriate PEP for HBV and HIV. So, these are the risk factors for needle stick injury. So, uh, needle stick injury it, or risk factors includes mainly depends on the type of needle and also depth of the injury and uh, whether the device is visibly contaminated with the blood and body fluids. Also about the viral load of the source person and volume of uh, blood that caused the exposure. So, all these things includes the includes in the risk factors. And also reuse of syringes and recapping and overuse of injection and unsafe sharp waste management. All these comes under risk factors.